As women age, their chances of natural conception decline. By the age of 35, fertility rates start to drop significantly, and by 40, the probability of a healthy pregnancy is around 10%. Advanced maternal age also increases the risk of chromosomal abnormalities and mitochondrial diseases. Mitochondrial donation is a groundbreaking solution. This technique could revolutionize fertility treatments, offering new hope for women with mitochondrial diseases or age-related fertility decline. It involves transferring healthy mitochondria from a donor egg into the mother's egg, creating an embryo with genetic material from three sources, the mother, the father, and the donor. This is why it's often called three-parent IVF. Three-parent in vitro fertilization, also known as mitochondrial donation, is a technique intended to prevent diseases caused by defective genes located in mitochondria. The result is a baby with three genetic parents, the father who supplied the sperm, the mother who supplied both the womb and the egg nucleus, and a donor who supplied healthy mitochondria. Majority of the DNA makeup of the child will come from the mother and the father, but since another woman's egg was used, it also contains her genes in the mitochondria of that cell. So how does it work? The process involves exchanging an egg cell that contains defects in mitochondrial genes with a cell from a donor that does not contain those defective genes. Once the donor egg cell is secured, it's then a matter of introducing the genetic material from the mother and the father. The two methods used in three-parent IVF are maternal spindle transfer and pronuclear transfer. In the maternal spindle transfer procedure, the genetic information from a mitochondrial defect-free donor egg is removed. Then, the genetic information from a mother with mitochondrial gene defects is inserted. In this way, a woman with harmful genes in her mitochondrial cells is able to place her genetic information into an egg that is free of the defective genes. This egg is then fertilized by sperm from the father. The resulting embryo contains the father's DNA, the mother's DNA, and a small amount of DNA from the third donor inside the mitochondria of the cell. The pronuclear transfer procedure is slightly different but effective. With this method, standard IVF techniques are used to create an embryo. The mother's egg is fertilized by the father's sperm, forming a two-pronuclear zygote. This very early embryo contains maternal mitochondria with defective genes. Here, the parental DNA exists in the form of a pair of pronuclei inside the cell. The next step is to remove the pronuclei from the cell and transfer them to a donor cell that has had the pronuclei removed. This donor cell contains mitochondria, which is free of defects. In the end, the pronuclei from the mother and father are transferred to the donor cell. The resulting zygote contains the father's DNA, the mother's DNA, and a small amount of DNA from a third donor inside the mitochondria of the cell. Now let's explore the day-to-day -day process from an embryology perspective. Day zero. The process begins with two oocytes, one from the patient, which exhibits mitochondrial mutations or low mitochondrial activity, and another from a healthy donor with optimal mitochondria. Both oocytes are fertilized using sperm from the same father through a technique called intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or ECSI. Day one. The next crucial step is nuclear DNA transfer. First, the nuclear DNA is carefully removed from the donor zygote. Then, the patient's nuclear DNA is transferred into the donor zygote. This creates a reconstructed zygote that contains the healthy mitochondria of the donor while maintaining the patient's nuclear DNA, which will dictate the baby's genetic traits. Day 5 to 6, the reconstructed zygote continues to develop in the lab, eventually reaching the blastocyst stage. At this point, it is ready for pre-implantation genetic testing for aneuploides, or PGTA. This test ensures the embryo has the correct number of chromosomes and increases the chances of a successful pregnancy. Once the PGTA confirms that the embryo is chromosomally healthy, the next step is the embryo transfer. The euploid embryo is carefully transferred into the patient's uterus, where it can implant and continue its development into a healthy baby. 
Mitochondrial donation is most commonly used in three cases, advanced maternal age, mitochondrial diseases, and repeated IVF failures. Advanced maternal age, mitochondrial quality declines with age, making it harder to conceive naturally. Mitochondrial donation helps rejuvenate the egg's energy production capacity. Mitochondrial diseases, these are inherited from the mother and can cause severe conditions. Mitochondrial donation eliminates the risk of passing on these diseases. Previous IVF failures. Some women experience failed IVF due to poor egg quality. Mitochondrial donation can improve embryo viability. Mitochondrial donation can prevent the transmission of numerous mitochondrial diseases, including Lee syndrome, MELAS syndrome, Marf syndrome, Kearns Sayer syndrome, Pearson syndrome, chronic progressive external ophthalmoplegia, NARP syndrome, Alpers syndrome, MNGIE, MIDD, SANDO. Every patient's fertility journey is unique. For mitochondrial donation, individualized care is essential. Factors like genetic history, mitochondrial quality, and embryo health must be carefully considered for each case. Unlike standardized IVF care, mitochondrial donation involves customized protocols to maximize success. By combining the best of modern science with personalized care, this breakthrough has allowed us to help countless families achieve their dream of a healthy baby. Visit our IFG website to learn more about mitochondrial donation and how it could transform your fertility journey.